Uh, we've got a lot to share today, um, starting with an update on our favorite time of year. Uh, we'd like to fill you in on all the details for the Halloween season in Second Life this year, with most everything kicking off on the 1st of October, just around the corner. Uh, first, of course, some new last names will be coming in, uh, as well as some new premium gifts. Uh, we'll let those remain a surprise until those are released. Um, we'll once again be hosting a Swagonator hunt as well. Uh, that'll be starting on the 8th of October. Uh, there'll be some exclusive gifts in that as well, of course. Um, the annual trick-or-treat event in Belisaria is going to return on the 1st. Um, that'll be all around the various Lindenholm regions, um, the Belisaria Lindenholm regions, to clarify. Uh, members of the community are welcome to visit the Millbank region to get their buckets. Uh, and just set your candy bucket up at your Lindenholm. Uh, people will be able to uh, get, pri get their uh, candy from that and prizes, and of course, for everyone who travels through that, uh, collecting goodies. Also, if you do have a Linden home and a Rosetta bucket, you will be getting five free bonus candies every week of the event. Of course, Izzy. Nope, you already got it. See? Um, Shop and Hop is also going to be returning. Uh, that'll open on the 4th of October. Uh, we expect uh, hundreds of stores, uh, free gifts, of course, throughout the event at all the booths, and a 20% discount on a sizable number of the items sold at the event. It's surely going to be quite a spooky little event there, as always. 20% um, off and all, uh, Most of the stores. The oh. People, the different stores can, can offer discount Very nice. items. Um, also, of course, uh, just to... The uh, event will last uh, until the 3rd of November, so be sure to check out the featured news blog uh, for more details as they come up. Uh, you know, the shop and hop uh, store list and so forth will be coming out. Um, so that'll be fun. I know that uh, October is usually particularly huge. I know that Vix and I will have our costumes ready, and Izzy is already pretty much ready. Um, so it'll be fun. Yeah, Sassy, there's always, I love seeing what people come up with, the various haunted regions and so forth. I think over the past uh, few years, we have, at least on our side, we have seen less and less uh, issues related to new builds concerning Halloween regions. It used to be before we made the major uh, scripting upgrades that um, yeah, designers would build out these really beautiful regions, and then we'd spend half our day troubleshooting why the, the script time uh, was tanking. So uh, hopefully uh, those designers and creators are, are reaping the benefits of uh, the hard work that we put in to uh, make these regions hold up a lot better for uh, more complex builds and uh, higher foot traffic. I know that Indeed. we appreciate it for Hairfair because we've noticed that over the years. It's just gotten easier and easier and easier to sim cross and all of those things. So, yes, thank you. And, you know, now we've got, you know, mirrors and so forth. So who knows what you can make now? Moving on to performance and PBR, as if I didn't give myself a segue. Uh, as we talked about in our last meeting, we're all aware that some of the past updates have led a lot of frustration over some of the suboptimal performance in the viewer. This is more closely related to the PBR releases. Uh, one, when uh, we released it in the Second Life Viewer, and then again, when Firestorm released um, their update. Um, we absolutely do share with your frustration here. Um, it went all the way to the top and we've made concerted efforts to release um, a number of viewer versions, uh, mainly the Delta FPS that's now in the uh, Second Life default viewer. Um, 
that's become a priority to make sure everyone's performance is on par. Um, but anyone who's still experiencing issues, um, if you're using the Second Life Default Viewer, if you're using the latest Firestorm Viewer, definitely reach out to our end because uh, we'll do everything uh, that's within our power to uh, help you restore some of that performance. So talking about the Delta FPS Viewer, the latest one was this one. And performance is uh, markedly improved. Uh, resident feedback on the tickets that we had uh, are showing definite improvements. Um, we've had a few region owners actually try to cancel the region because their viewers just can't keep up. Uh, so the first thing we're saying is, you know, before you go, try this viewer, see how it is, let me know what we can do. So definitely reach out to support. Don't think uh, that because the viewer is tanking on your end, that will be the end because uh, we definitely have some options uh, available for you. So you can learn more about the uh, performance upgrades here. And if you still had some questions about PBR and other performance related issues, uh, we have a server user group that meets every Tuesday at noon, Second Life time, and they gather here. They had a lovely party yesterday. And if you feel like uh, just submitting a bug, if you notice something awry with the uh, latest viewers, um, as always, go ahead and submit a bug report here. Those get reviewed nearly on a daily basis, as often as you can. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's in your um, wheelhouse because I don't think it actually is, but is there any understand knowledge about why there's no transparency on the PBR tab? Like I can't make something invisible. Yeah, I'm not sure on that, unfortunately. Sorry. I would recommend the server group on that, however. Yeah. I, I, Um, Sage, they actually did um, opt to leave one of their older ones open for now um, to aid with the transition. Uh, it may eventually have some voice issues with uh, upcoming code, but it is out there. Yeah, exactly that, Pantera. Uh, Firestorm 6.6.17 is the one they're holding on to for now. And yeah, the first functionality it's going to probably have issues with is going to be voice. I guess I should go ahead and uh, talk about uh, voice while we're at it. Um, it is very, fairly close on the horizon. We're looking at some changes that way voice works um, in Second Life. Uh, we're moving towards web RTC voice in world, uh, transitioning away from the older VVOX system. Uh, it does provide a higher quality audio, uh, stereo audio, noise reduction, automatic game controls, echo cancellation, and improved security. Uh, we hope to see some more features on it going forward. Uh, you can test it out today. Uh, on the various WebRTC voice enabled regions. Those include, but are not limited to these. Uh, you wanna make sure you have most recent viewers in order to do that as well. Uh, and also if you, um, uh, if you uh, are able to handle the, the current VVOX voice system is still working as you can tell, cause you can hear us today. Um, there will be a new voice echo canyon coming for the new system as well for testing. Um, there are a couple of things that aren't quite enabled yet that we're still working on. Uh, for one, conference chats uh, will not yet be available. And also, this is the big one for some, uh, the voice morphing capabilities uh, will not be available. Uh, we do have an FAQ 
currently for WebRTC. We put up the URL for that. That'll give some tips for those that want to use third party voice morphing services um, with the system as we go forward. Any questions on that or anything we've discussed so far or other questions, please feel free to jump on in. Is that a known issue on Firestorm's end? The crashing. Yeah, we're working diligently to get there. Um, it hasn't been fully rolled out yet, still very much in a testing phase, but uh, it's something that we're actively progressing towards. And as we roll it out further, uh, we'll let you guys know. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Pertaining to that? On, Please. On the, reg on the regions that I own, We've been testing out all of the new rollouts and stuff like that, and we're having trouble with the crashing as well. The, the people in my regions are having to go back. Um, is, I know that this is, this is a Linden meeting and not a Firestorm meeting, but um, are y'all working together on fixing like voice issues and like we've been working on trying to get it to work on our regions on purpose and trying to figure out what is happening. <laughs> but we we definitely are, want to hear about it. Yes. Go ahead, Vix. Yeah. So we are not Firestorm. While there is some levels of collaboration, um, they have their own separate bug reporting system. Um, so if you are experiencing crash, they actually still use Jira while we have moved on to Canny. Um, you can definitely, yeah, thank you, Pantera. I would definitely let them know um, of the issue that you're seeing. And then in the meantime, okay. see if you can replicate it in the Second Life Viewer uh, using the default. Um, you can reach out to yeah, us. Yeah, we do have some that are doing the same thing. Okay. And Perfect. they're using uh, the default Kenny. viewer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you could uh, go to feedback.secondlife.com and let us know, that would be greatly appreciated as well. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Any other questions on that or anything else that we've discussed or, or anything really? Uh, we'll have a couple more things to go over, but just wanted to make sure everyone had a chance. Go ahead, call it. Yep. I can answer that uh, to an extent. Uh, that is being looked at um, as far as the default EAP cycle. Um, you're not the only person who does find it a bit dark, uh, even at midday. Um, so it is being looked at um, as far as what that's going to entail. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, that's certainly, that is discussed, that has been discussed and God, I hope we'll get that soon. <laughs> I think that was related to PBR as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, natural light. Well, it was, it was, yeah, it was a bit dark before. I know that's still an issue, too. Are we still getting reports of that? Yeah.
Some people are just so upset with the water situation. Like, that's just make or break for them. Yeah. I was about, uh, I was about to ask that too. I don't know where screen space reflections are in the queue. I know there's probably a quite substantial queue at the moment. Yeah, I know they've been discussing that over in the server meeting as well, as far as what they're trying to do on that. Because it's the way the reflections were done and that are different from the PBR reflections and they're trying to trying to figure out their path to fix that. Uh, Bex, answer your question about 10,000 prim uh, homesteads. Um, while it's tracked, that means you know, they've accepted it. Um, it unfortunately it doesn't mean that it, it will be something that would be implemented anytime soon um, just like a feature request that's accepted into the list for review uh, that just means that it's on a list of items to look at um, whether or not it's something that can be actioned on would be determined you know by the review team um, so far we haven't heard anything about homesteads getting increased prims um, but i'd say you know see what kind of noise we can get if there's enough uh, residents that would clamor for it uh, that would be something to you know to consider um, but yeah right now we we haven't heard anything and um, I probably wouldn't sit and, and, and wait for that to come about um, just because um, homesteads have had 5,000 prims for so long um, it, it would probably be a false promise to say that it's happening anytime soon you know realistically it I would submit the idea as you did, um, and then you know the review team would look at it, and we'll see. Yeah, I'll I'll, we... I'll echo on that because I I often will will mention this is that, I mean anything is possible. Um, it's got to be reviewed. Um, there's probably a lot of people that need to take a look at that, but um, you know hopefully we'll see. It's worth trying. Hey, if I've you could, if you why they don't sorry. I was going to say, if you can make 1,000 land impact, like 10 person open spaces for as, as an option instead of Linden Homes for Premium Plus users, I'll get Premium Plus tomorrow. <laughs> Nothing's ever set in stone. For the longest, uh, full regions um, were a requirement if you were going to own a homestead. And then with the you know introduction of Premium Plus, it became a perk to own a homestead without a full region. Um, for the longest, you know, 20,000 prims was the standard. Uh, I think before then, wasn't it 15,000 prims, Wendy, I think, on a full I region? I think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah, and it got increased to 20. And then uh, you saw the option for another 10,000. So yeah, nothing is ever permanent and everything is ever set in stone. We're constantly reviewing things. As you see, a number of changes are constantly being rolled out. So I would say, you know, what kind of uh, uh, feedback can we get on it? If there's uh, enough residents that would love it, maybe that's something that we can leverage. You never know. I don't know why you don't a la carte a lot of stuff. Like there's so much to monetize in Second Life that you just don't monetize. Like why can't you just sell bundles of prims? Like, why can't you just say, okay, you've got a homestead, you've got 5,000 um, here, pay us an additional this much and you can have another 2,000 or 5,000, et cetera. I can touch on part of that. Go um, for it, Izzy. One of the things is obviously streamlining, which isn't a good answer. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. It's a easy answer. Um, but another one is performance. So the more options that we have, uh, the harder uh, it is to do performance checks on things because there are so many more variables. And in a system that already has a billion variables, limiting uh, this and that um, is always a good thing. I mean, yes, it has bad kind of to it but you guys that have that own private regions that have done you know checks and you know had performance issues that you've had to fix and everything there's a lot of different things that you check having number of prims be another variable on a sliding scale would make that that much more complicated so that's definitely something to keep in mind um not to say that it isn't something that we couldn't do, um, because there are things that I know 15 years ago, there was definitely, you know, things that couldn't be done absolutely won't happen or anything like that. Um, but 
now they're just done. So never say never uh, is definitely uh, alive and well uh, in Second Life. So keep that in mind. Um, but those were the earlier reasons why that kind of thing didn't happen. Hope that helps explain it a little bit. Thank you. Absolutely. Is it possible to bring up a topic of Linden Homes and the rolling? Because I made a canny about sure. it yesterday. So I sure. made this canny yesterday um, to propose the idea that the rolling system is just either gotten rid of or an option. Um, I think that to open up the user experience as well, having the actual mailbox in the front of properties become available um, would just make for just a really nice sort of check out a neighborhood, walk down the actual street, see a house that's available and think you want to move into that neighborhood and and you actually have the tier allowance or you have the limited home allowance and you right click and you accept the home even if you already have a linden home somewhere else it could then just say you know that by going proceeding with this you will be giving up your other home yes or no um i think that the rolling five per day just leads to crazy and i don't think people feel as attached to the homes the same way as they could be by actually choosing that property and i think that a lot more people would see the delight in home ownership on a linden home if they actually did have to do it that way kind of like going together and as a family and then and then if somebody does actually have a neighbor or something that their home is suddenly available they'd see it they'd see it outside their front door and be able to say to their friends oh my god oh my god the house you loved next door is up you know rather than this gambling kind of hit and miss where you just end up anywhere I absolutely hear that, and I have to take your uh, question in two parts, okay? Um, the first part was about um, the ability to select a Linden home specifically by interacting with that mailbox. The mechanism I can't guarantee, but I can tell you that we are actively investigating just that kind of situation. So I, I don't know if it will definitely happen what the time frame is or anything like that but it is something that we recognize is problematic um uh and we want to go ahead and uh solve um repeat the other part of the question i was just sort of saying that like oh the rule and restart yeah oh no um, i'm sorry I, I don't know how long, Sassy, you've been around for a long time, but I don't know if you're uh, close to the 20-year part yet. I am. <laughs> okay. So if you remember way back when, we shut down for an entire day to do updates. I do um, because updates. I'm in Australia, and I used so, to sleep weirdly and wake up <laughs> again, and then you'd be hammering, and I'd go, oh, my God, what am I going to do in the dark? <laughs> exactly. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely um, better um, the rolling restart is definitely problematic um, because it can happen at any point during the day and it takes a while for regions to come up. That's always something that we're looking at, you know, perfecting or improving on. Um, but it's going to take, you know, some time before um, that system gets changed because there's a lot to it um but definitely something you know that we could yes exactly i agree with you toothless and i get it too because i'm working in a region and all of a sudden it's restarting and invariably when i jump to another region it's also restarting so believe me we feel the same you know situation that you have um so i mean believe me when i say that that's something that we're always looking for ways to resolve it's just a very complicated resolve i'm just Small suggestion, I know you've recently introduced um, scheduled restarts. Um, sometimes there isn't actually a server update. I know we're still on like server version July something. Um, if it's just a kickover, and if there's already been a restart within the last week, could a region 
just not be limited and rolled? There are parameters that I can't go into because, of course, we don't want to put them out and, you know, enable somebody to game the system. Um, but there are parameter checks that look and see on a light level. And I will admit that it does err on the side of a restart because regions can become stale. Um, but it does check things similar to what you're saying. And it could become more robust as we move on. Right, sit down, sir. <laughs> Actually, that makes me think of um, when you said gaming the system, I kind of wonder, did you have a lot less people asking to restart regions once Garcha became illegal? Because people were using that to get copies of Garcha items. That was a known fraud situation. So it's just I think we've seen those... we saw a decrease in restarts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the most requests we get are usually from the same residents um, who are, are usually managing their parcel, and so they'll reach out to us. Um, yeah, and it's usually it's, it's, like it's, it's uh, the same familiar names. Yeah, and it's usually like uh, more uh, like clubs and so forth rather than anything like uh, right. Like what yeah. Ones that go through a lot of script memory and stuff like that right, through the day. Right. Yeah. It's just kind of curious for giggles, really. Well, we have a few more topics to cover um, right halfway through. And this one is it's talking about staying safe because we have been seeing an uptick in issues with scams in Second Life, such as download links for new viewers, uh, fake marketplace links, and so on. Uh, we do ask that you stay vigilant when you see a suspicious link and to please file an abuse report when you do come across these things. Our governance team has all the tools needed to investigate these and can take quick action on these issues. Uh, we've also posted this to our blog uh, for all residents to uh, review, and you can take a look here. This also includes some additional tips to stay safe and scam free in Second Life. I actually um, brought it up at the um, last CCUG about that with phishing links and stuff. If it would ever be a consideration for the Lindens to put in um, the option for a group to turn off any ability for hyperlinks to, uh, to actually show up as links at all, um, if not sent by the owner or moderators for that group so in other words if somebody just went in there and spammed a phishing link it just wouldn't be clickable uh, because they wouldn't have the rights to do so in the group and if it was a legitimate giazo kind of thing that somebody was trying to share hey look at what i did with this top or whatever that you just sold me and it looks fabulous uh people would be willing to try and copy paste that and it would identify as a Giazzo, so that that would be cool. Pulse Good idea. Domain whitelist. I think a blanket uh, link removal or filter, uh, as you said, would also remove the uh, good ones as far as like sharing images and whatnot. Um, but if a group is experiencing just a deluge of, of phishing links, just an on off switch, uh, even for a right. short time might be sufficient. Right, or they could even just sort of, I mean, it wouldn't, if there's moderators in a group or staff in a group, if, if a person that's legitimately a customer trying to, to share some, some sort of good feedback, they can also IM the mod and then the mod could copy and paste it themselves if they had that option, if they wanted to, if they wanted to proceed. It's not that big a deal, but the other thing is horrible. Like when they do go through in the groups with the phishing links and everybody just screams, don't click it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, unfortunately, possibly three people already had. So, you know, it would just kill those links and hopefully those people would just go away. Yeah, I, I do think that's that's at the very least worth putting into uh, Canny. But 
that would be a nice add to uh, to group mod, mod abilities and so forth. Okay, I'll do a, a Kenny feedback on it. Thank you. Please, please. Um, I uh, we did have a blog post uh, go up just a few minutes ago. So breaking news <laughs> on some uh, changes uh, underway with payment processing to keep up with uh, uh, current government regulations. Uh, they won't affect if you have payment info on file currently. Uh, fairly minimal impact overall, but uh, we did want to give you a heads up. A uh, slight change in process. Um, you can read that at there. And uh, if you have an issue with payment information due to this change, uh, try uh, removing and re-adding your payment information. And uh, if you still have problems or any other questions, uh, please do reach out to uh, the support team. Yeah, it just it just came out just a little bit ago, but I wanted to make sure it got mentioned. And I do not know, Joe. I wish I had them, Luke, but I don't. Indeed, Sage, I still remember, uh, this will date me, but I still remember when we had breathable shoes. That was something. When we had what shoes? Breathable. Oh my goodness. It wouldn't surprise me if you've had say. breedable plywood boxes by now. You would think. I remember when somebody tried to sell prims on, on Marketplace. Only the finest prims. Only the best pine. It's good. Um, you can probably... Oh, your voice is not doing very nice things. Vbox knows its time is near and it is resisting.
breedable staff sage? That's crazy talk. I'm also a huge fan of SDCC. It's too bad they have a five-year wait list for, for new uh, vendors. Two older residents got together and made a Linden baby. I mean, does that count? Five years, Empress. So we got one more topic uh, we want to touch on here, then we'll open up the floor to everybody, and that is Linden Homes. As we discussed previously, planning is underway for our next Linden Home themes, the ones that everyone here has voted on. So far, it is the Tiki water theme and the Alpine style theme. Think of it as a snow one. We do not know yet which one might be a 1024 and which one might be a 2048, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, we have released more homes in the existing styles, uh, or ranch homes that everyone has loved, including the Mediterranean styles, among others. And we're constantly building out new uh, communities for the existing styles as well. So anyone who's still looking for a Linda home, uh, remember, you can always visit this page in your dashboard. You can also go to the belly demo region if you want to see what the styles look like before you start choosing. And Premium Plus residents have the option of literally browsing through the existing communities and choosing a home that they like, uh, submitting a support ticket with the location of that home, and our mainland team will make sure that home is eligible for assignment. And if it is, and resident can take it, uh, then it is given. Absolutely. Too Holocaust. much work. That's why we need the letter book. <laughs> <laughs> there is a little bit of foot, uh, footwork involved. Yeah. Yes. Um, you actually have to go out to the community. Um, I've always looked at it as part of the fun. You get to choose where you want to live. Um, it's not too dissimilar from uh, real life where you have to, you know, go out there and actually look at the house. Um, of course, you know, there's there's apps to you can see the house before traveling. Um, maybe that would be a feature request someone might be interested in. Um, you know, a system where you can see which homes are currently available before right. you teleport. Um, that's something that um, I, I think has brought been brought up before. Um, that's not um, in existence yet, but uh, it's, obviously it's um, it'd be one more added convenience. Uh, but because this is still a relatively new feature, the and still a lot of it is manual, the act of going to the home, choosing that one versus having the selection tool do it for you. Um, and then having the main main team also come out and make sure that home is uh, eligible. So uh, as we, you know, refine tools through nine things, um, you know, hopefully things become a little bit more convenient for everybody. Kind of liked the idea that um, with the idea that I had before with the letterboxes and not having to roll for them anymore. Um, that was also an idea that I put in the canny was that you could have like a hub where it actually showed you that there's three homes available in this region, there's two there, there's one there, and then you actually explore those regions and pick which one you like the best and then then grab that home and, and it would come off the board if it was taken. And it just, it's, I don't know, it's just the immersion of it. Like as soon as I started typing it, I, I imagined in my head and I made it.